Welcome to the next video of our uh, microcontroller series. This time we're going to talk about the AT Mega 328 architecture overview. First, let's talk about the computer architecture of our microcontroller. According to the datasheet, in order to maximize performance and parallelism, the IVR uses a hardware architecture. If you remember in our previous video, the main characteristic of this architecture is that you have separate buses for accessing program and data. It, says, it also says that instructions in the program memory are executed with a single level pipelining. This means that while one instruction is being executed, the next instruction is being prefetched from the program memory. This is something that our microcontroller can accomplish because it uses a hardware architecture. And this is a concept we will be covering on this video. Now, let's talk about the instruction set architecture of our microcontroller. Our microcontroller is a low-power CMOS 8-bit microcontroller, which is based on the IVR enhanced RISC architecture. Remember, RISC stands for Reduced Instruction Set Computer. It also says that by executing powerful instructions in a single clock cycle, as we saw on the previous slide, our microcontroller achieves speeds approaching 1 MIPS per megahertz. We will be discussing what is MIPS and why it is important that you understand this unit of measurement that measures the speed of, our, of a microcontroller. Now, what is MIPS? Let's see an example. Which do you think it's faster? Someone that is walking a half of a step per second or someone walking two steps per second? You would be inclined to think that someone walking two times or making two steps per second would be faster, but you would be wrong. Now, let's see another example. Who do you think it's faster? Someone walking at a half a step per second, but in order to move one meter, that person has to uh, take one step versus someone walking at two steps per second, but in order to move one meter, this person needs to take four steps. Now, if someone is walking at half a step per second, let's put here 0.5 steps per second and it moves one meter per step you can see that these units cancel each other so this person walks at a speed of 0 0.5 meters per second, which is of course this person. The second person moves at two steps per second, two steps per second. But in order to move one meter, uh, this person needs four steps. So in one meter, This person needs four steps. Again, the units cancel each other, and you can see that two divided by four it's actually also zero point five meters per second. It means that the velocity of both persons is equal. So what is MIPS? Similar to the example that we saw previously, it is a more accurate way of describing speed. Instead of focusing on the cycles per second or hertz or megahertz in our microcontrollers, which is of course the steps per second in the walking example, we will focus on the instructions per second. But since microcontrollers can execute a lot of instructions per second, we use millions of instructions per second. 
So it's very simple. A million instructions per second is equal to one MIPS. Now, let's see an example related to microcontrollers. Which do you think is faster? A microprocessor with a system clock of 1 MHz or a processor with a system clock of 4 MHz? You'd be inclined to think that the greater the system clock, the faster the microprocessor. But as we saw in the previous example, you might be wrong. Now, let's see another example which is faster. A processor working at 1 MHz with one cycle per instruction or a processor with 4 MHz with 8 cycles per instruction. The processor working at 1 MHz, it means 1 million, which I'm going to write with an M, cycles per second. And if this microcontroller can execute one instruction per or per cycle, it means that it can execute one instruction per cycle. So again, we see that the units cancel, and this microcontroller can work at one million of instruction per second. This is what MIPS is. Now let's talk about the second controller. Remember, the first one got a 1 MIPS measurement. The second controller can work at 4 MHz, which you would, again, you think this is the faster controller. So it's 1 mega cycles. I'm just going to put a C per second. However, this microcontroller needs 8 cycles to execute one instruction. So one instruction. needs eight cycles so we see that the cycles cancel and you see that the we have a four divided by eight which means that this microcontroller executes 0 0.5 mips in theory the processor working at a lower speed it's actually faster than the processor that is working faster but at the same time, it takes more time to execute one instruction. Even so, you might be wrong about actual performance. This is not the only thing you have to consider to determine if a microcontroller is faster than another one. Now, let's see a basic example of a CISC versus RISC approach for solving a task. The task is simple. We need to multiply two numbers which are stored at data addresses 100 and 101. This is a theoretical, theoretical example of instructions. This would be the CISC approach. You simply put the instruction, which is MOOL, and put the direct addresses, which is 100 and 101, and the microprocessor will make this task. On the other side, this is the risk approach. As you can see, you have more instructions. First, you have to access address 100 and put it in a special register, which is called A. Next, you have to read address 101 and put it in register B. Afterwards, you will use the same instruction, which is a multiplication, but instead of putting 100 and 101, we just put A comma B. Remember, the CISC approach is called complex because the same instruction can do two things at once. The first is access the addresses directly, and the second one is performing the multiplication. However, the risk approach, we need to do these two steps separately. Now, let's see these two examples and see which of the two processors are faster. These are the two approach. So, imagine that the CISC 
processor, it's working at 0.5 MIPS at 4 MHz. What is the time to execute this instruction? To calculate the time, we have 0 0.5 times 10 to the power of 6, which is the million of instructions per second. And as we can see, we have only one instruction. So all we have to do is take the, its invert this value, and we would have 2 times 10 to the power of minus 6 seconds. Or 6 seconds per instruction. 2 to the power of minus 6, it's 2 microseconds. Now, let's assume that the microprocessor that we have that has the risk approach it's working at 1 MIPS in, at 1 MHz. What would be the time to execute this, these three instructions? So, if we have 1 MIPS, again it's 1 times 10 to the power of 6 instructions per second. If we invert this value, we have that every instruction needs 1 times 10 to the power of minus 6 seconds per instruction. So in order to execute the three instructions, you would need three microseconds. And for the other controller, if you remember, we had two microseconds. So, of course, this would be faster. Now, let's talk about the microarchitecture of our microcontroller. If you remember in our previous video, we said that the microarchitecture is the block diagram of how our microcontroller is built. This is the block diagram of our microcontroller. First, we will be covering the top part. And, and then we will see the bottom part of this microarchitecture. First, let's start with the CPU. This is the CPU. Remember, it's the central processing unit, which is where all the instructions are executed. And one thing that I want you to notice is that the CPU has a direct connection to the flash and to the SRAM. The SRAM stands for static RAM. The flash is where the instructions are stored and the RAM is where the temporary data is stored. So as you can see, we have two different paths for instructions and data. This is why this microcontroller is based on hardware. Next, I want you to see this part. This part is the supervision for the power. Uh, the BOD stands for brown out detection and it means that the microcontroller can detect when the voltage is dropping and do something if this happens. Over here we have the oscillator which is the system clock of our microcontroller. Over here we have a watchdog oscillator and a watchdog timer. This is a peripheral of our microcontroller that allows us to monitor if the microcontroller is working properly. Another thing that we can see here is the EEPROM. This is also used for data. The difference between RAM and EEPROM is that data at RAM is lost if the power of the microcontroller is lost. However, data in the EEPROM is stored permanently until we want it to. Now, let's see the bottom part of the architecture of our microcontroller. Again, this is the CPU. Uh, you can see that we have a shared bus, which is the one I'm going through, is the one that is with gray. And notice that is there's a single line connecting everything. Down here, we can find all almost all of the peripherals of our microcontroller. 
All of these are peripherals. Let's see some examples. These are timer counters that can count either time or events. This is also another timer. This is an analog comparator to compare if a voltage is greater or lower than a specified voltage. This is the analog to digital converter. This is the peripheral that allows us to communicate through serial with some external device. This is the SBI, which stands for Serial Programming Interface. This is the two wire interface. And finally, we have three ports, which are the external pins to the microcontroller, which is port B, port C, and port D. Notice that port D has eight pins, port B has eight pins also, but port C has only seven pins. This is it for this video. Thanks for watching.